All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, for today's video, as I promised, I made a video talking about this whole inspector general investigation into my Instagram account that they claimed was racist and used racial slurs. And they said that because of my Instagram account, I am, I, it's, it, my Instagram account is unbecoming of an officer and it, they want to make sure that I get punished for the things that I get that I posted on Instagram. I told you that there was like eight posts that they deemed to be violations of policy. Today, we are gonna talk about the first one. Uh, this post right here, they decided it was a violation of city policy. Now, we're gonna talk about this meme and what it says and what it means to me and why I posted it and why I don't think that they have the authority to tell me what I can and cannot say about this particular situation. But before that, I want to remind you what the Civilian Review Board had to say about it. So I'll be back in a minute. Go ahead and listen to um, Willard McIntosh describe this meme. The photo depicts a meme of SpongeBob SquarePants with Mayor Andrew Ginther superimposed over the top with him appearing to say F-12 which is slang for F the police. <clears throat> and burning a piece of paper that says, if you support the police instead of criminals, crime will go down. The officer stated that he created this meme and stated that his intent behind posting the photo was to talk about policy and things that should be done to stop crime, but are not being done to stop crime. This post depicts Mayor Ginther in a way that suggests he, he is not supportive of CPD. All right, there you have it. According to the Inspector General and the Civilian Review Board, this post depicts Mayor Andrew Ginther in a way that suggests he does not support CPD. I, I wanna, I'm going to classify this as thou shall not speak ill of the king. I'm going to start right off by saying I live in the city of Columbus. I am a tax paying citizen that lives in the city of Columbus. Sorry about eyelash. This man is an elected official. He is the mayor of the city that I live in as a citizen. And as a taxpayer, I can say what I want to say about this man. I can have an opinion on him. I can have an opinion that is shared by thousands upon thousands of people about this man. And if I want to make a meme that suggests he doesn't support the police, I can make a meme suggesting that he doesn't support the police. That is my First Amendment right. Nobody in the government has the authority to tell me what I can and cannot do when, I'm, when it comes to talking about the mayor of the city that I live in. Now, regardless of the fact, if you want to say, well, you have an opinion, but your opinion is not truthful. Well, let's go through some examples and then you can tell me whether or not my opinion is based in any kind of reality or if this is just something that I just pulled out of thin air and then I'm a giant, I'm a big fat liar and I shouldn't have said these things. Uh, so the first article that I want to have, and I'm trying to keep these in chronological order. Uh, this is an article from... November of 2020. This is the fall after the summer of love. Uh, it says Columbus activists say city budgets proposed police cuts are a tiny baby step. And right here, the Columbus Division of Police may be facing a $20 million budget reduction next year. Andrew Ginther unveiled his proposed 2021 budget on Thursday. So Mayor Andrew Ginther, as seen in this picture, proposed a budget where he reduced the police budget by $20 million. This was something that was known as defund the police. This is something, this defund the police notion, which is one of the stupidest ideas I've ever heard in my life. It fooled a lot of really stupid people, including the mayor of Columbus, Andrew Ginther, who decided to reduce the Columbus police budget by $20 million, which I'll mention that the following year, he had to increase it by another $9 million because he realized 
the folly of his ways. But this is also the thing, this defund the police thing was something that we're told didn't happen. We're also told that it was the Republicans that want to defund the police. Mayor Andrew Ginther is definitely not a Republican. And it definitely did happen. He re- reduced the police budget by $20 million. And this is right after the riots where activists, the same activists, tried to burn down the city. And they actually burned down millions of dollars worth of property in the city while doing so. Uh, the next article that I want to bring up for you is... Um, A story that says three Columbus police officers are facing criminal charges stemming from the 2020 riots. I don't know why they keep calling that something other than a riot. But these police officers were charged by a man named, I think his name is Richard Dick. So Dickhead Wozniak, a retired FBI, I can't click there because it's a link. A retired FBI agent was hired by the city of Columbus to investigate police officers and their response to the riots. He was hired with the purpose of filing criminal charges against police officers who had uses of force in response to people that were breaking windows, vandalizing buildings, lighting buildings on fire, pulling people out of cars and beating the ever living shit out of them. The mayor's response to these riots was to go after the police. He also set up like within 24 hours, a hotline where you could call in and make complaints against the police, specifically stemming from the riots. He never made a hotline like this for business owners or for people who were pulled out of their cars and beaten up. Um, Never set up any kind of restitution fund for the people whose lives were turned upside down by the riots that occurred in 2020. But what he did do is he hired a retired FBI agent to go after the police officers. By the way, all the charges ended up being dropped. A couple of the trials, the, a couple of these went to trial and the officers were found not guilty. The special prosecutor, Kathleen Garber right here ended up quitting and resigning before the third case even went to trial because it was a fucking joke. So anyway, Here's another one where it says arbitrator rules city cannot hire an independent contractor to investigate Columbus police. This is a situation where the mayor of Columbus hired an outside law firm called Baker Hostetler and paid them more than $600,000 to investigate the police response to the riot. He did not put this kind of effort and resources into prosecuting The rioters that caused all the damage downtown caused businesses to move away from downtown, caused residents to move out of downtown, making it a virtual ghost town for a long period of time. He didn't care about that. All he cared about was going after the police department. That would cause someone potentially to believe that he cares more about criminals than he does about police. This happened at the same time that the city of Columbus through the city attorney's office dismissed over 2,000 criminal charges. The majority of them were against the rioters who were arrested during these riots. If you are actively dismissing charges against the rioters and actively pursuing charges against the police department, do you think that would cause someone to believe that you're supporting criminals instead of police. I think that would be a fair assumption. Uh, Here's another one where this was in uh, August of 2020. This is a few months into the summer of love. Um, This article talks about how uh, violent crime was up dramatically since the riots began. And the mayor, Mayor Andrew Ginther, had some things to say about it. Where is his favorite line? Here it is. We know we can't police our way. We can't police our way out of everything that has happened and that the spike of violence we are seeing, there is a very small number of folks that are creating a disproportionate amount of mayhem and violence. Well, I want to tell you a little story about police officers. This actually happened across the entire country. It also happened in the city of Columbus. There were riots that happened in the summer of 2020. The response to those riots was to go after police officers and tell them, you know what? 
if you go after these criminals, but we find the slightest error in your response to that, we are going to make sure you are criminally charged and we are going to release those criminals. That set into a police officer's mind, maybe I shouldn't aggressively go after criminal activity. Maybe I'll sit back a little bit and take a more relaxed approach because if I go chasing down a person with a gun and I shoot that person and these civilians don't think it was a clean shoot, even though according to my training and all the background and everything that I already know, this was the appropriate response, they're still going to crucify me publicly. I don't want to put myself and I don't want to put my family through that. So I'm not going to go out there and be as aggressive trying to keep crime down. What that means is that this increase in violent crime happened as a result of de-policing. It came as a result of people like Mayor Andrew Ginther, who when the police did their job, he went after them. So the police stepped back a little bit. This crime wave that continues to this day is a result of de-policing because of the message that somebody like Andrew Ginther is sending these officers. Uh, the next thing that Mayor Andrew Ginther did was he proposed and got his voting base to support a civilian review board. And what he did with this civilian review board is he stacked it full of anti-police activists. This is very clear and it's easy to prove because this is a whole story about how there was a guy, his name is Kyle Strickland. I've done a video on him in the past. He was nominated for the civilian review board. And before he was confirmed, he went out on social media after the Micaiah Bryant shooting, and this is what he said. Do not let anyone tell you that you must wait for all the facts while they simultaneously frame their own narrative of what occurred. We've seen this story before. Kyle Strickland outed himself as an anti-police activist, and he was still put on the Civilian Police Review Board. If you watch any of the Civilian Police Review Board meetings, it's very clear that every single person who was put on that board, maybe not every single person, the majority, let's put it that way, has some kind of anti-police bias. They don't understand how it is that the police do their job. They don't understand the rules that they're supposed to be enforcing. They also don't even understand their role in this process because all they care about is trying to hammer police officers. Here's a story. Uh, this is very recent. This is April 24, 2023. It's just a week or so old. Uh, three people were added to the Civilian Police Review Board, and two of them don't live in the city of Columbus. There were three vacancies on the Civilian Police Review Board. Um, the mayor of the city of Columbus is the one responsible for appointing new board members. And two of the board members that sit on the Civilian Columbus Police Review Board don't live within the city of Columbus. And all three of them are activists of one sort or another. Are you really telling me that in the city of Columbus that has a residency of about 800,000 residents, you're telling me that you can't find three people within the city of Columbus that are intelligent, unbiased observers that are willing and able to get onto your civilian police review board. You're telling me that you have to go outside of the city of Columbus to find people who are able to do this. And then the three people that you find are political activists. Go ahead and try to tell me that you support the police when you're doing stuff like that. Here's something else I want to show you. See, this is some graffiti. And then here's some more graffiti. The graffiti on my right, this was spray painted on High Street, which is the main thoroughfare, thoroughfare during through downtown. On the roadway, it says ACAB, uh, fuck, pe fuck pigs, BLM, fun schools. Okay. But there's multiple anti-police slogans painted on this roadway. That's an undeniable fact on the other picture in response to 
the summer of love and the riots and the burning and the destruction that occurred. There was a counter protest that occurred on a different street. It was front and Marconi maybe, which is really close to police headquarters. This other group of protesters went out and they painted back the blue on the street. Now this BLM, ACAB, fuck 12, all this, this kind of graffiti, this kind of graffiti stayed on the city streets for weeks, if not months. The back, the blue was cleaned off the street the same night. The mayor of Columbus, Mayor Andrew Ginther, has sent a very clear message time and time again who he supports and who he doesn't support. I can tell you that right now, currently, it's clear to me that the poll numbers have changed and the activist and his voting base has started to modify their stance on the police. So he's coming out trying to position himself in a way that says that he does support the police. I'm going to sit here right now and tell you that he's lying. That his true self is this one. This is who he really is. 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 He's a defund the police mayor who aggressively sought criminal charges against police officers while dismissing charges against rioters. He let anti-police graffiti sit on the streets for weeks and months. And he made sure that messages supportive of the police were removed immediately. That's who Andrew Ginther is. He is the mayor of the town that I live in where I pay taxes. He is an elected official. This is the reason the First Amendment exists. You cannot make a rule at my employer telling me that I cannot criticize local elected political officials. That's all I'm going to say today. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.